The man that, that homesteaded this place, Richard Hinton, in 1871, was born on the Oregon Trail in an ox cart as his family came west. It's one of those stories. Bringing the people behind our food to life. In 1852, they came all the way across. They went right through this desert country to what was the Promised Land, and that was the fertile Willamette Valley. And they came to build families and to establish farms and communities. That was the dream. And he grew up there seeing it farmed, fenced, plowed under, overpopulated. And as a young man, he started to dream of being a, a stockman. He wasn't so enthralled with farming. So he struck out on his own uh, when he was 19 years of age. And he came into the interior of North Central Oregon, where we are today. He set up housekeeping in a dugout cave into the creek bank two miles north of here. And that's where he started his ranching operation. He brought in sheep right away and cattle soon after. And because he had been raised a farmer, he put in crops. So he very quickly and early established this four commodity operation, which was cattle, sheep, grains, and hay production. Into the early 1900s, he achieved the designation of being the largest land and stock holding in the state of Oregon. That operation continued successfully, and part of the reason it was is that diversity and then his planning, his planning and building, his breeding program. He was very visionary, and he started importing breeding stock and crossing those two types of sheep to produce an animal that would give him two quality crops, a good meat lamb and a fine wool count in the same animal. After World War II, synthetic fibers were developed. Things have evolved. Always the rancher and the farmer must face the evolution, well, actually all of us as humans, of change. We have to deal with change. All our direct marketing really began when we completely lost the wool market in 1999. We began the work to take control of that a little bit more. Today, 100% of our production of lamb goes direct to chefs, to restaurants in uh, Central Oregon, and some into Portland and the Columbia River Gorge. The presence of our lamb in the hands of chefs uh, and the appreciation for the story and the land management practices, they were interested in our beef as well. And the wool from the sheep also is direct marketed and have our own yarn line now which distributes nationally. And that led to the request for things made up. So we uh, have been employing regional textile artisans to create the fabrics, textures, and the actual ready-to-wear apparel line. So we are selling our yarn line and our apparel line nationally, and that's a growing segment of our business. The grain is still sold as commodity. Our hay production primarily sells into our finished beef program, so it actually sells as pounds of beef. We didn't build this empire. What we can do is to honor the people that have been here before us and preserve it as a National Historic District property, which might make somebody in the future think twice about bulldozing buildings. That's, all, that's the only reason. It was our effort to protect it, preserve it, capture the story, save the structures, and preserve it for future. <laughs>